ladies and gentlemen, Pincus Sukum. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm delighted to be able to be here to honor one of the great musicians of our generation, Nathan Milstein. It seems as though I've known him all my life. I grew up listening to his records, going to his concerts in Israel. He was and is the violinist's violinist, an artist of perfect technique and profound feeling. The man is a phenomenon, so brilliant that when we hear him play, we feel exhausted and exhilarated at the same time, uplifted and humble. Natan once said, music is one of the proofs of God's existence. And every time we listen to him, we also have to believe that there are angels on this earth. He has warned us that it takes 60, 70 years to become a fiddle player. Well, Natan, I have about 30 or 40 to go. <laughs> I'm one of a generation, however, carrying the torch that he lit. But it never burns more brightly than when it is in his hands. Everyone in our world treasures him because he refuses to make a fuss. He disdains fanfare and flattery. There's an intense calm at the center of his being, a sense of self-truth. He is a man neither in need or in awe of fame. And so in some ways, this evening must be hard for him. But no one, no one ever deserved it more. Natan, your career is an honor to music. Thank you. Sometimes I think it's so silly for a grown-up person to come out on the stage and scratch the violin. glories of Tsarist Russia. A mischievous little boy, his mother thought music lessons would keep him out of trouble. So, he said, I learned to play the violin because my mother made me. After his first performance, he said, the technical parts were easy. What I liked best was the box of chocolates they gave me. At 16, he realized that music was more than technique. It was a lifelong journey. With his friend, Vladimir Horowitz, he steeped himself in the tradition of the masters. This musically gifted pair became the pride of their country. Then came the revolution. When he and Horowitz left for a concert tour of Europe, he knew he would never return. Paris meant beginning again. On his own, he did. Audiences have been wonderful, he said. They listen to music, and for me, that is everything. Said cellist Gregor Piedigorsky, Natan was full of fire. He stood squarely on the ground and was equal to any challenge. The challenge came as an invitation from America. Said Leopold Stokowski, I want this virtuoso to make his American debut with me. In 1929, he did. His flawless technique made music flow like crystal clear water.
become one with the music and simply let it speak. You hear his restraint. You feel his passion. A private man who avoids the public eye, he says. Music is something that I feel. When you listen to Schubert or Bach, you can hear God in the universe. It is a gift for me to be able to express it. Because he does, when Milstein comes to play, every violinist comes to listen. Said Isaac Stern, I don't think he has fingers. I think it is radar. Nathan Milstein has taken our hand and gently walked us through heaven. The artistry of Nathan Milstein already has inspired three generations. His own, that of Pinker Zuckerman, and that of the remarkable young violinist Midori. In tribute to Nathan Milstein, playing Mozart's duo for violin and viola in G major, Pinker Zuckerman and Midori. Thank you. 